likely have to do some neuromuscular re-education. It's the same thing in his mm -hmm. anatomy. Yeah. He's going to well, need to learn how so to eager use to it. But you've know been doing wrong. exercises with virtually little to no right. change Not in his really. mouth. Right. You know, right. if I put a cast on your arm and sent you to PT, you wouldn't I get just, a lot out of it. I don't understand why Duke wouldn't have seen that. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, it's something that so I need to follow up with. I so, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, when I first started practicing 35 years ago, there was a debate in the field of, uh, in, you know, the ENT field about tubes. There were doctors who said, like, every kid in the world got tubes for a while, and then they figured out, well, maybe we're putting in too many tubes, and kids who didn't need them are landing up with, you know, perforated eardrums or landing up with more fusion or something. So they swung totally the other way. And then no one got tubes. And then there were all these kids who really needed to oh, get right. like him. He tubes. He an infection okay. all the time. Right. So, and then there was that balance. I think the research on tongue tie initially was only in the lactation field. So oh. if you were a baby and you couldn't breastfeed, you had your tongue released. Other than that, it was like, well, if you had no problem breastfeeding, then your tongue must be fine. But that's not true. And then there were like a, a lot of pediatric dentists that started to look at tongue tie structure. So why are there people walking around who have tongue ties who are eating and talking? And the answer is they were able to compensate. compensate right. And then there's a whole host of kids and uh, you know, there's a growing body of literature that says, oh, you know what? If you can't move your tongue and you look at function, you need to look at structure in relation to function. So there are a lot of ENTs, there are a lot of dentists who say, it well, if you can move your tongue, like if he's doing right. this, he should be able to right. do everything. Right. But I'm looking at task out, I'm looking at what do you need to do to be able to move food back here? You need to be able to do this. If I could take his tongue and move it in that direction, I might say, oh, he's got low muscle tone. Maybe we just need to work on that. But you've been working on placing food back here. You've been working on some of the deck. You've made little to no progress in that. Right. Why? He can't move his tongue. Right. So he needs to be able to move it in order to do that neuromuscular re-education that we're, we're talking about. So I think a lot of doctors look at structure and they're not looking at it in relation to function. And sometimes, like, it, there will be kids, like, I can show you tongue ties that are so far back that a lot of times, you know, doctors will go, even David Karras will go, well, listen, yeah, he's tongue tied, but it's not the worst I've ever seen. And then he goes in to do surgery and he clips that, like, front piece and he sees this, this really deep posterior restriction, a band that you couldn't see without being in the mouth. Right. So I think, uh, you know, it depends. You need to look at structure in relation to function. Right. What do we need his tongue to be able to do? If your tongue's stuck like this, you're not going to be able to do it. And I think some of the nasal resonance that you're hearing is because of that. So if you look at this, that upper lip, that labial frenum. Oh, that's the oh yeah right that's that upper lip okay right. that's what his upper lip is a right. little no, less does. but that's what his upper lip is doing right um so if you look at this i'll show you a couple of times mm -hmm. this is a funky one mm. that's pulling the middle of the tongue she can't use the I think size that's what russell does uh so my son russell says her. for blair he says blair yeah is that she probably that? can't retire so this is a kid who had an older child with major speech issues. Uh -huh. So you see this piece right. of the frenulum, but you see how his tongue is so cupped. So what he needed to have done is that released and then lateral, lateral. That's uh, the one that I was explaining that, right. you know, that's right. pretty far back. So when right. Dr. Harris first looked at that, he was like, well, you know, it's I gone. need to know in, the, in relation to function. Right. Um, his is, is much farther forward. If you look, look under the tongue, you see how that's pulling? Right. Right, so the tongue is dumping this way as opposed to 
this way. Right. Okay. And that's more like what his looks like. And then if you look at this, that white mm -hmm. is the frenulum. And that's the cup. His is more humped than Wells. Right. Right. So it depends. Some sometimes you see the hump, sometimes you see the well. And they come in all shapes and sizes. I mean again, that's one that's pretty far back, uh -huh. but you can see how it's pulling the yeah, tongue into tongue. that. Right. Well, and sometimes they're real sometimes when they're really long. Oh, that's really a hard one to see. But look at this, because this looks a little like when when I lifted his tongue. This is more of a tongue that's hollowed right. than a tongue that's welled right. from how far forward is. That's really more what his is. Right. Okay, so it's really more anterior versus posterior. So tongue ties come in lots of different shapes and sizes and, you know, restricted labial freedoms come in all different shapes and sizes. And if you can compensate, you know, go for it. I, I, you know, I always use the example of my husband's chiropractor, his specialty is sports medicine. He was a chiropractor for the New York Mets in the 90s. He was a chiropractor for the U.S. Speed Skating Team right. in the Utah Olympics. Those athletes have perfect posture and alignment. You know how many weekend warriors come in here that are playing tennis and hurt their shoulders? Right. So the foot turns out a little bit. So they're asymmetrical. Their bodies don't have to be perfect. And if they can compensate, so be right. it. It's fine. So if I, you know, if you're a pediatric PT and you see someone walking and their left foot's turning out, if it doesn't influence their ankle, their knee, their hip, you're not going to say, "Here's my card." And there are times I watch people eat and I'm like, let me see if that's anything. Baby carrots, okay. Um, you know, there are times I watch people eat and I'm like, "Why are they eating steak?" Because all the, they're like, but huh. they've managed to compensate. Their speech sounds fine. I'm not recommending that they go get surgery. Right. Right. You always need to look at function. Right. Looking at function. So I'm guessing that if he wasn't exhausted. Oh, so here's something else. If this is his typical, like, okay, I can be very dysregulated, and then you add one other thing to it, like you got him up really early in the morning to get on an airplane. Right. It's like, right. you know, you guys are probably tired. He didn't get tired. his regular nap. Right, he didn't get his regular You guys are probably tired, but you're able to function even though you right. feel tired. Right. He can't. One more thing for him is like that apple cart that everything goes rolling out. Right, right. You know? Right. So, I'm going to give you David's information. I mean, I honestly, if, if there weren't all these other pieces, I would say, Come see me tomorrow, we'll see what we can get done. But I honestly feel like there are, like I can't wait to get my hands on him again, but there are lots of other pieces that I'd like right. to see pulled together. Right, right. And I don't want no, to see I, you waste your- I think that makes sense. I'd rather have you do that. And if I hear from Aileen or from, uh, you know, I, I then I will absolutely, um, you know, call your cell phone and say, Here's her contact yeah, information and we're totally can, available. And you can, you know, do that. Um, Aileen works at a couple of pools, one that's right here in, in Norwalk, one that's in in um, uh, Stanford, which is kind of like on your way to yeah, that's not too the far. airport. So none of them are all that far. Where are you staying? Um, we can't remember. <laughs> it's kind of an like unusual name, unusual two names. Hotel in Norwalk.